So, um, in the next uh, minute, we're going to talk about coronary substraction and how this new software improved evaluation of calcified coronary arteries. So, you know that uh, coronary uh, CTA is an uh, important non-invasive tool in the real practice to rule out uh, CAD. But uh, if you check out the recent uh, get light of a stable CAD and non-ST segment ele elevation myocardial infarction, they support the use of CTA in symptomatic patients with low to intermediate uh, probability of the uh, disease. However, in patients with high pretest uh, likelihood, the technique is not recommended. And one of the reasons is because these patients have a high probability of coronary calcification that could be bad in the uh, analysis of the images and reduce the uh, uh, value of the technique. So the introduction of uh, Achillion 1, a uh, 320 row uh, CT scan, has made possible to get in a single uh, heartbeat a map of the uh, whole uh, coronary artery. That uh, uh, implies a high diagnosis accuracy, although there are um, some uh, um, limitation of this technique because uh, a small stents or maybe when you have a huge amount of uh, coronary artery calcification. So recently have been developed a new software to allow the subtraction of uh, calcium and metal uh, stent to improve the diagnosis uh, accuracy in these uh, scenarios. So the goal of uh, my lecture is to show you our experience in assessing this uh, new uh, substraction technique in uh, either vessel with, uh, heavily calcified or uh, vessel with uh, stents. The substraction coronary technique requires two scans, one pre-contrast and, and another post-contrast. The uh, substraction is quite challenging because it's not like in the T2 substraction performed in the digital substraction angiography where you have just a only two dimension. Now we have three dimension and the, and the heart is uh, beating in, in, in the three uh, axes. So the, uh, the, the technique has to keep in mind all this, uh, all this movement. So there are two protocols we can use, a single breath hole or a two breath hole, and then the uh, non contra CTA volume is subtracted for the contract enhanced and CTA to remove this calcified lesion and to remove the metallic part of the uh, stem. Here you can see the two protocol, the two separate breath hole and the one single uh, um, breath hole. Breath hole, but we prefer the single uh, breath hole uh, protocol. So after pre-oxygenation, we perform just a uh, um, uh, regular uh, 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 scan, and uh, we uh, use then uh, without contrast, and then we uh, make the acquisition with uh, contrast, and finally we uh, work with our images in the water station. This is a script capture of the, of the uh, software. And when you make uh, the uh, acquisition, you have to reconstruct every 5% of the cardiac cycle, both with and without contrast of this uh, acquisition. The uh, new software, they select what he considers the best uh, phase to do the subtraction. And usually, they do well, but anyway, if you can uh, check your uh, different phases, you can uh, choose another, another phase to make the uh, subtraction. You then, uh, again, uh, ask the software to do the subtraction. They show you this uh, part that are subtract. They subtract you the, um, the, uh, the bonds, they, sus they subtract you the, the, the calcium, and finally, you get this volume when you can see the final result of, the, of your uh, acquisition or of the uh, subtraction, and then you go to the water station and start to work with the different um, vessels. So we are uh, done uh, so far, 23 patients. As you can see, the uh, Agaston score was pretty, pretty high. 
we evaluate um, a huge amount of uh, sediment, and there are a lot of uh, sediment with uh, stained and calcified uh, black. We use a visual quality scale ranging from non-evaluable to uh, high confidence evaluable sediment. And in our study, there was a significant improvement in the evaluation of uh, coronary sediment. And regarding extended segment, we uh, also get a significant uh, improvement, as you can see here. Another important issue is that the number of non-evaluable and poorly evaluable segment descend uh, more than a half, from 35% to 13%. Uh, so I'm going to show you several cases. The first case is a 51-year-old male. He was an Arctic uh, smoker with uh, hypertension. He had a chronic ischemic heart disease that was previously revascularized, and during the last month, he presented a typical chest uh, pain. The basal EKG didn't show repolarization or malities. When you look at the CTA, you can see here that there is the, the stent is hard uh, if there is or not uh, evaluated, if there is a neointimal uh, hyperplasia. Here you can the uh, subtracted images, and when you uh, check this image with the invasive coronography, you can uh, prove that there is no significant lesion in this, in this vessel. The other case is a, a, a past smoker with, uh, with cardiovascular risk uh, factor that during, during the last week presented with a typical uh, chest pain. And an inconclusive uh, exercise EKG that is uh, in real practice is quite uh, uh, frequent, this situation. Again, when you do the, the coronary CTA and you apply the subtraction technique, you can see here this uh, plaque that could be difficult to evaluate when you uh, do the subtraction, you can see that there is a nice correlation with the invasive uh, angiography and there are no significant uh, lesion. In this case, it was a, a patient with uh, chronic ischemic heart disease with a previous uh, infarct and a stent in the RCA. Now he is with uh, unstable angina in the context of the CTO, this uh, chronic total occlusion at the site of the stent that was again uh, revascularized. So six months later, he would refer to a CTA to check the uh, result of the procedure. So here you can uh, see that there is the stent. Maybe it could be difficult to evaluate the, the presence of uh, neointima hyperplasia when you remove the stents, yes, maybe there are some neointima hyperplasia, but they, they were not significant lesion, and you can see the correlation with the invasive uh, coronography. This is one of the last, uh, the last cases. It was uh, two weeks uh, ago. It was a patient with chronic ischemic cardiomyopathy and a typical chest pain. The Agaston score, as you can see, is fairly high, 1,950. Uh, uh, and percentile is 96. When you can see the image, maybe with, uh, without subtraction, it's uh, hard to evaluate the left main trunk, and it's hard to evaluate the distal part of the um, uh, LAD. But when you look at the image uh, with the subtraction, you can see that there is no lesion at the left main trunk, and there is a significant lesion in the distal part of the LAD, as you can uh, check uh, as well, and you can see here the correlation, there's no lesion on the left main trunk, and there's this significant lesion at the distal part of the uh, LAD. There is another pro pro uh, projection. You can see there is nothing on the left main trunk, and the circumflex is, uh, is okay. You can see a tiny plug that, well, uh, well removed by the, uh, by the subtraction uh, technique. There is no, no lesion at the circumflex at the um, invasive angiography. On the other hand, in the, um, in the, the RCA, you can see this uh, uh, total occlusion. Maybe it could be hard to uh, depict the beginning of the, of the occlusion 
uh, with uh, calcium, when you uh, use the sustration technique, you can uh, see better that the uh, occlusion start here, that uh, there is here, it's hard to evaluate here, but here you can see there is a repermeable site part of this uh, total occlusion. And when you uh, compare this image, when the image of the uh, catheter, so you can see that there is a nice correlation and even it was possible to depict that part of the occlusion is uh, partially open, as you can see in the, um, in the catheter, in the images of the invasive angiography. And the last case is uh, another uh, case with a, a stent at the RCA. The LAD, you can see there is a nice uh, correlation. The, the, the um, subtraction uh, technique allows to remove the calcium. This is the correlation. But, and you can see that the, the, the stent is hard to uh, evaluate with, without the subtraction technique. When you use the subtraction technique, you can see that there is a neointimal uh, hyperplasia and that the lesion is uh, significant because, as you remember, this is the correlation with the, the image uh, of the invasive angiography because do remember that uh, for a stent lesion is considered significant above 50%, not 75%. So there is a nice correlation of the significant uh, neointimal hyperplasia in this patient with a previous uh, stent. So in conclusion, we uh, think that the substitution coronary software is a useful tool to minimize calcium and metallic artifact that may improve uh, the, our accuracy of the coronary CTA, especially in those patients with a uh, huge amount of calcification or a small uh, stent. Although more studies I needed to uh, validate this, uh, this technique and find out what is his real role in our clinical uh, real practice. So thank you very much. <laughs>